friends, you may recall last time we discussed about specific sources and pollutants in indoor environment. Today we will look into health impacts due to indoor air pollution. So, uh, you may recall we also discussed uh, you know like uh, general health impacts of uh, air pollutants, but specifically from indoor air pollution what kind of health impacts can be there, today we will focus on that. So, in that uh, line we, we would uh, first uh, you know look into a very general kind of brief introduction on indoor air pollution and human health their relationship and then we will go one by one means those major indoor air pollutants and their health impacts like carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide or particulate matter, lead, volatile organic compounds, okay, biological contaminants, pesticides, everything those listed in this particular slide. Then at last we will uh, look into like uh, special vulnerability of children, women and senior citizens which who spend lot of time in, in, in the indoor environment okay? and at last we will conclude. So, when we go for brief introduction then you know like most of the people nowadays not only women, children and old people, but also working population because lot of things are going on into indoor offices. right? So, uh, the occupation uh, hazard you can say from indoor environment if that is uh, ex, uh, that is exposing the people to toxic elements. So, that, that is increasing because lot of office work is being uh, done in indoor environment. So, there are studies which we, which uh, you know give this data that approximately 90 percent of their time indoors average most people on an average they spend approximately 90 percent of their time in the indoor environment. Okay? And people who are most uh, susceptible or vulnerable to the adverse effects of pollution tend to spend even more time because of their uh, you know peculiarity like uh, age related uh, you know peculiarity if old people are there then uh, normally they stay indoors. Okay? Children also women uh, who are homemakers basically they also spend lot of time indoors and uh, they are get expo they, they get exposed to uh, indoor air pollutants because of cooking and so many activities which are sources of indoor air pollutants. Then indoor concentrations of some pollutants have increased in recent decades due to increased use of synthetic building materials because you know the building patterns have, have also changed over the years. Now, we use lot of uh, chemical bond related uh, building material, furnishing, personal care products they also uh, you know emit lot of VOCs etcetera. Then pesticides because we have certain plants inside our houses and we use sometimes pesticides also uh, for pest controls and other uh, things. Then household cleaners are also there which are like for mopping etcetera. So, they emit lot of hydrocarbons or uh, toxic uh, elements. Well, when we talk about indoor air pollution and human health then uh, you know there are short term effects as well as long term effects. Okay? And short term effects like uh, <coughs> you know people may feel irritation into eyes or nose or in the throat or headaches, dizziness or fatigue means even if you are not working very hard you sometimes feel fatigue, very tired those kind of things and the reason may be the indoor air pollutants. Okay? So, these things you need to keep in mind and then there are some immediate effects like uh, <coughs> you know kind of uh, sneezing and those, those kind of thing very quick sneezing if some allergens are present there. When we talk about long term effects then there are other uh, like uh, diseases which can be of heart diseases or uh, cardiovascular diseases, respiratory diseases even cancer can be there because of some indoor air pollutants. Okay? So, these things are into this category of long term effects when we are get exposed to for long term to the indoor air pollutants. Okay? Well, when we talk about major indoor air pollutants then there are uh, you know several uh, pollutants air pollutants and some of them are you know common like they, they may be present in outdoor also like carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, particulate matter etcetera. But there are certain pollutants which are you know more uh, they, they are present in more quantity or uh, more chances are there in the indoor environment like asbestos or formaldehyde. Uh, oh, oh, maybe they may be also in industrial locations also, but chances of their presence in indoor environment is also high. Lead because of paint etcetera, then biological contaminants, pesticides, radon, volatile organic compounds because of certain you know chemicals we use uh, uh, in the washrooms etcetera. 
Well, when we talk about specific pollutants and their health impacts, then we go one by one like we take uh, carbon monoxide. Okay? So, what are their health effects? Like uh, their acute health effects may be there because of you know formation of carboxy hemoglobin in the blood which inhibits oxygen intake in the body as you know because CO gets uh, you know uh, into the blood and it uh, forms this carboxy hemoglobin and then the carrying capacity of the blood for the oxygen get reduced drastically. And this can you know cause like fatigue or, or tiredness something like that because you are not getting sufficient oxygen in the body. Okay? So, that affects negatively to the body uh, the complete body system physiological system okay? and then the moderate you know concentrations may uh, co cause like uh, you know suffocation or uh, impaired vision means uh, sometimes you feel that uh, dizziness you are not uh, looking at things properly things are not visible properly. Okay? Then there may be some reduced brain function also means you are your alertness, your attentiveness get reduced, you are not very much focused and that could be because of carbon monoxide exposure to the carbon monoxide. When we talk about high concentration because you know low concentration, moderate concentration, high concentration they have different effects. High concentrations can cause very acute headache, okay? dizziness, confusion nausea and you, know, you can get unconscious also uh, when you know oxygen uh, content in the blood is very low okay? and even people can die and that is why you know sometimes you, you might be reading some news that some people when they forget to have proper ventilation and they use some sort of you know in the winters uh, uh, you know those kind of uh, sources of heat which uh, emit lot of carbon monoxide like coal burning those cigli etc. Okay? So, <coughs> those things emit lot of carbon monoxide and because uh, you know it is colorless, odorless and it does not warn you okay, beforehand. So, uh, the people in the during sleep they inhale lot of carbon monoxide, they get unconscious and sometimes they die also. So, that is very fatal and uh, very problematic. So, what we do to uh, you know uh, get the less exposure of Carbon, on a carbon monoxide or reduce the exposure of the carbon monoxide. So, basically we need to keep fuel burning appliances in good working condition because uh, you know when the burning is not proper then CO2 emission is less carbon monoxide emission is more. When you know the complete combustion occurs then there is hardly any carbon monoxide lot of carbon dioxide get released, but incomplete combustions they emit lot of carbon monoxide. So, when these uh, you know stoves or uh, fuel uh, burning appliances or devices are in good condition then they will have they will favor the uh, you know complete combustion that would be better. Then uh, you can check the heat systems or chimneys or ventilation systems regularly so that you know proper ventilation occurs proper uh, incoming of the air and outgoing of the uh, you know these exhaust uh, gases are uh, properly done. Never burn charcoal indoors because that emit lot of carbon monoxide. So, that need to be kept in mind we should not burn charcoal inside the houses because otherwise it will produce lot of carbon monoxide. And never leave a car running in a closed garage because again this uh, when car is idle and the engine is running then lot of carbon monoxide is produced as you know vehicular emissions are large in quantity for carbon monoxide or NOx emissions those kind of things. Okay? Then install and use exhaust fan venting to outdoors over gas stoves. So, proper uh, you know chimney must be there proper uh, uh, that uh, kind of uh, you know exhaust fan must be there. So, that uh, all these exhaust gases whether it is carbon monoxide or other pollutants they get out quickly. <coughs> well, if we talk about nitrogen dioxide okay, then it has also some health impacts. For example, it can increase the bronchial uh, this uh, reactivity uh, in asthmatic patients okay, this uh, respiratory system as you know and it can decrease the lung function uh, because of chronic uh, obstructive pulmonary disease COPD which is uh, you know quite dangerous if it uh, goes beyond certain limit. It can increase the risk of respiratory infections especially in young children. So, the nitrogen dioxide is also 
problematic inside the uh, this micro environment. Okay. Then when we talk about like uh, their uh, uh, the, their health effects like they have irritating uh, uh, affecting this uh, uh, mucosa of the eyes mucus or those uh, you know that uh, liquid portion or moisture which we have in the eyes and nose or throat. So, that is natural thing uh, for proper functioning of these organs. So, that moisture is uh, you know irritation is there in that or respiratory tract also and lot of problem may occur. Then extreme high doses of this NO2 can cause like uh, uh, you know uh, uh, this pulmonary uh, edema and diffuse lung injury. Okay. So, those kind of things may be because of lot of NO2 uh, like fire is occurring then lot of NO2 emissions may be there. Then if we get continued exposure to high NO2 levels which can contribute to the development of very acute or chronic bronchitis. So, again respiratory problem may uh, you know aggravate and this can be very severe in fact. Well, when we talk about like what are the steps which we can undertake to reduce the exposure of NO2. So, again there are certain common <coughs> you know features in all indoor air pollution related uh, problems like ventilation is good everything related to the ventilation when we talk about the concentrations of indoor, indoor air pollutants. So, when we keep these appliances gas appliances properly adjusted then NO2 production is reduced. Then when we can have better you know ventilation spaces like heating devices and unvented corners should not be there. Okay. Then we should use proper uh, fuel in kerosene space heaters otherwise that can produce lot of NO2. We should install and use exhaust fan as we have uh, you know uh, discussed in last this carbon monoxide case also. So, that is important part. Then open uh, flues uh, when uh, fireplaces are in use. So, that should be there. We should not have idle cars in the garages as it, it can also cause lot of uh, this NOx emissions. Okay. When we come to the particulate matter, okay, so these are like uh, small particles uh, less than 10 micrometer or PM 2.5. So, they can you know cause problem to the lungs or our res respiratory system, they, they get into the system depending upon their size okay. and they can enhance or increase the diseases which are like of coronary uh, artery disease or congestive heart failure or asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease COPD. Uh, children and older and uh, people are you know at greater risk because of this exposure of very fine particles. Then uh, if we talk about major health impacts, so again eye and nose irritation, throat irritation can be there, it can <coughs> aggravate this COPD as we have discussed, even premature death it can cause because of certain uh, you know heart and lung related diseases it can, it can trigger. And if we want to reduce its concentration then again uh, we should have good ventilation and uh, we should not have those uh, you know stoves or those kind of uh, uh, fireplaces which can emit lot of particulate matter. So, those things we need to uh, keep in mind. We should also uh, you know do like uh, for example, uh, if we are using some uh, wood stoves, then certified wood stoves we should use, which are certified by some agency like in the US it is EPA, <coughs> in, uh, in our country like CPCB and other uh, you know, agencies are there. We should use uh, and uh, like uh, trained professional inspectors should be there in indoor environment of industrial setup. Okay? And uh, these central heating systems must be properly managed by those skilled people, right? chimneys must be proper and the repair and leakage those kind of things must be maintained nicely and there should not be like inside leakages which can cause lot of emissions of particulate matter. We should also change filters if we are using some filters in the heating system or cooling system because if those filters are choked then they also become the source of indoor pollution of particulate matter. So, the cleaning of those filters is very much required time to time. Even those you know as you might have heard like nowadays many people use air purifiers okay? and air purifiers use the filters. If you do not clean those filters basically it will add into the indoor air pollution. So, rather than reducing it will be a additional source. So, those things we should be uh, careful about. Well, when we talk about uh, you know their health impact then uh, the size is very important like 
you know coarser particles from PM 2.5 to PM 10, they can go to you know upper part of this respiratory system, but uh, less than uh, you know PM 2.5 they can go up to the lungs. Okay. And when they are uh, you know like PM 1 or so, so they, they can go to alminoli, okay, which are you know those parts of the lungs where this exchange of oxygen occurs uh, into the blood and uh, the, those particular part. And uh, further ultra fine particles basically they can go into the blood streams. And as I said earlier also uh, in one lecture that if you know those ultra fine particles if they are coated with some you know carcinogenic elements or toxic uh, elements they can trigger certain diseases in, in the body. So, we, we must be uh, very much uh, you know alert about these health impacts. Well, uh, you know when we talk about second hand in smoke like some people are smoking and other people who are not smoking, but they are exposed to exposed to that smoke which is coming out of because of cigarette smoking or like that. So, <coughs> they have several toxins basically and they can affect uh, you know influence or impact the health of the other people who are in the surrounding not only the person who is smoking, but to the persons of, of uh, you know passive nature means they are not the smokers, but they are smoking because of uh, you know this vicinity closure proximity to the smoker. Well, uh, these uh, you know have uh, these particulate matters can be there or uh, other uh, toxic uh, elements can be there in, in the and serious health impacts can be because of those uh, passive smoking or second hand smoke. Okay. So, how to reduce uh, the steps or how to take the steps to reduce exposure means we should have a specified corners where person can smoke and in living spaces where most of the people are there it should be kind of prohibited. You know if somebody wants to smoke then he or she should go uh, you know outside like uh, balcony or somewhere where uh, these people are not there. Okay. And in public places as you know nowadays a uh, lot of awareness is there and there are certain uh, corners where you know it is written that smoking is allowed here only. So, you cannot smoke in public places except those designated places. So, that way this exposure to the second hand smoke can be reduced significantly. Well, then there is like asbestos. So, asbestos as you know like it is available in several kind of building materials or from soil those, those exposure is there and it can cause uh, you know several uh, problems uh, uh, like uh, you can see these health effects uh, like lung cancer it can cause. Okay. So, that is very problematic uh, exposure to the asbestos. So, to reduce that again we should be very very careful about like we should not disturb materials that might contain asbestos okay, like pipes, furnace, insulations, okay, siding, flooring all those kind of things. If we are disturbing them then we should have proper contractor who is expert in handling those things otherwise you know lot of emissions may be there of the asbestos. Okay. And uh, you know people who live in the areas where these natural asbestos deposits are near areas contaminated by all asbestos containing products are there, they should keep asbestos levels low in the home by using several uh, kind of uh, uh, ways. For example, wet cleaning methods are there of high efficiency particulate air, uh, vacuum cleaning uh, can be done or you can use doormats to remove shoes before entering. So, as you know in Indian culture uh, you know there are uh, most of the houses they uh, uh, you know remove the shoes outside the house when they enter into the house. So, these are cultural uh, behavior, but they are very good in uh, uh, you know getting rid of those pollutants which can come with the shoes etcetera. Right? Then formaldehyde again this can come uh, because of several sources we have discussed and the health effects are like watery eyes or burning sensation in the eyes and the throat, nausea, difficult in breathing or wheezing kind of coughing kind of things may be there. right? And it can be like uh, when uh, people get exposed to levels above 0.1 ppm. So, uh, it is very problematic and high concentrations may trigger you know attacks in people with asthma. So, asthmatic attacks may be there, it is very dangerous and there is evidence that some people can develop a sensitivity to formaldehyde like uh, uh, when they are just get exposed to then these kind of things happen like, uh, like allergens uh, do something like similar to 
those eye irritation etc. Okay. And it is also known for causing cancer in the humans. So, it is very dangerous or problematic. Again to reduce it uh, we have to do several uh, you know steps like uh, 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 those uh, formaldehyde content of pressed wood products may be there okay? uh, including uh, building material and furniture before purchasing them we can ask that we should uh, be having those kind of things which uh, uh, have minimum of this formaldehyde or do not have, do not have the formaldehyde content. Okay? Then uh, you can also go for uh, uh, like uh, when in which condition they are released formaldehyde is released like the rate at which formaldehyde is released is accelerated by like heat or may also be deepened uh, somewhat on the humidity level. So, we can do like uh, dehumidifiers we can use air conditioning in the system to control humidity. So, to maintain the moderate temperature and that will reduce the chances of emissions of formaldehyde. Okay. Well, when we consider this uh, lead, lead related health effects, so depending upon the level of the exposure of lead, it can adversely affect the nervous system, kidney function, immune system and re reproductive and uh, developmental systems and the cardiovascular uh, system. So, means multi negative impacts are there. Okay. It can also uh, you know affect the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood like CO does. Okay. And the elevated or high lead concentration in the environment can result in decreased growth of reproduction in plants and animals and neurological effects in uh, these uh, you know animals or uh, those kind of uh, which are having uh, the like spines and those, those kind of animals and birds etcetera. So, this is very dangerous in that sense. Okay. And to reduce the exposure of the lead you can have unleaded uh, like pet, uh, petrol in ambient environment that can reduce the lead content. But in indoor environment uh, like paints etcetera which are the sources of the lead pollution. So, you can go for those paints which do not have lead or very minimum quantity of the lead. So, and then ventilation and other things uh, we should go plus we should be careful that paint uh, should not uh, you know peeled off those kind of if there is a situation of not a good uh, situation then have a better paint otherwise uh, you know it can be a source of the lead pollution. When we talk about volatile organic compounds so, so that it can come uh, you know from several sources as we have discussed inside the houses and the health effects are like eye irritation, nose irritation, throat irritation many people have allergy to VOCs basically. It can also cause headache and uh, you know like uh, low level of coordination, confusion, nausea that, that kind of thing. It can also damage the liver, kidney and central nervous system. So, many negative health impacts are there. Then some organics can cause cancer in animals, some are suspected to be known as uh, causing cancer in human also. So, VOCs are of several kind and they can have different negative health effects. Well, when we want to reduce uh, the exposure, so we should reduce their sources very simple like we should not uh, use those kind of room fresheners etcetera which can increase the levels of VOCs. Okay. And uh, also we should be careful about uh, like uh, good ventilation fresh air should be there. So, uh, we can deal with this uh, and we can reduce the VOCs concentration quite drastically. When we talk about biological contaminants then there are several sources of uh, allergens okay, and these allergic reactions are the major health effects of these biological contaminants because you know some disease like uh, fever or uh, uh, you know these toxins can uh, go for these kind like mold or dust mines, dust mites or uh, pet uh, dander or pet droppings they can also uh, be source of biological contaminants okay. and the tuberculosis or uh, measles or there are many infectious diseases which can be caused by these biological contaminants. So, again if you want to reduce the exposure to these biological contaminants then we should uh, tackle at the source level that would be better and uh, like uh, if there are pets then uh, we should keep them away from our uh, living environment uh, and we should keep them clean. Similarly, like uh, those kind of uh, you know kitchen and bathrooms the ventilation must be proper otherwise this uh, you know in seepage leakage is there then molds and uh, you know fungi those kind of things may occur and they, that can trigger many kind of uh, allergic reactions. So, we should be using uh, like cool mist or ultrasonic humidifiers 
and clean appliances according to the manufacturer's instructions, okay, refill and fresh water daily, those kind of things we should take into account. When we talk about pesticides, because nowadays we deal with our you know kitchen garden or we have indoor plants also, so sometimes we should we use pesticides and they can be source of these uh, pesticides concentration in the indoor environment. And they can you know cause irritation to eye, nose and throat, it can damage central nervous system also, kidney also get affected, it can increase the risk cancer because of these pesticides. Okay? Then symptoms may also include like headache, dizziness, muscular weakness, nausea, all those kind of things can be there because of pesticides. It can also like chronic exposure is there, like longer exposure is there, then it can affect the liver, kidney okay? and then endocrine and nervous uh, systems. Endocrine and nervous system means it can change uh, even uh, different systems of our uh, these uh, at the cell level, DNA level. Okay? Well, when we talk about uh, like how to reduce the exposure to pesticides, so again ventilation must be good and we should go for non-chemical methods of pest control rather than using these pesticides. Okay? And uh, we should uh, you know dispose of unwanted pesticides safely, otherwise that could be source of pesticide emissions. Right? We should keep exposure to the moth repellents to a minimum. Right? Then the chemicals must be used. Uh, uh, you know when recommended uh, in a recommended amounts only and we should not go for uh, larger or more amount than the recommended ones. Okay? And uh, safety precautions are very much needed and better is that uh, rather than being dependent on chemical uh, these pesticides etcetera, we should go for other organic ways to control the pest. When we talk about like health effects of the radon, so it can have uh, like uh, we can breathe, uh, we can inhale the radon when it is present in the indoor air and it can uh, you know damage the lining of the lungs and uh, uh, it can uh, gives off the radiation. Okay? And uh, over the long period if exposure is there then it can damage the cells and uh, it can lead to the lung cancer. That, so, that is very uh, problematic because it get exposed to the lung because of respiratory system. And when we go about the symptoms of this uh, exposure of uh, radon, then it can uh, you know coughing of the blood, blood can come out of because of it reduces the lining of that our respiratory system. And chest pain or losing weight without uh, you know trying, so those kind of things are there which are negative impacts, health impacts of the radon. And uh, when we go for like how to manage it, so better you know you can have better ventilation system. Uh, where it can come from the you know underground soil. So, for that special uh, these ventilation pipes can be installed. Then <coughs> when we uh, also go for gas permeable layer or plastic seating or ceiling and the caulking those kind of measures are there which can be uh, used uh, which can be uh, good uses for mitigation of the radon. Well, uh, you can also use these vent pipes and junction box, these are things for mitigation purposes of the radon. Then when we talk about like vulnerable population in the indoor environment like children, okay? so <coughs> they are the population because they spend lot of time inside the indoor environment, so they get affected. Similarly, women who are using uh, like uh, uh, kitchen etcetera, so they can get exposed and there are studies that like COPD related diseases are much more in the women folks. So, uh, then lung cancer, cataracts, those kind of things, they are associated with their uh, indoor environment related pollution. Similarly, uh, you know uh, like uh, the senior citizens, uh, breathing problems, vision problem, okay, heart related problem, uh, there are health related or age related issues and then uh, it can also uh, increase those kind of things like uh, sore throat etcetera, because they are more exposed, because they do not uh, go outside the much uh, more than the adult population. So, this is all for today. In conclusion, we can say that there is the uh, you know link, very strong link between some common indoor air pollutants like radon, particulate pollution, carbon monoxide and their negative health impacts. Okay? Radon is known for uh, human carcinogen and uh, uh, it is the second uh, leading cause of the lung cancer uh, in uh, developed countries or uh, where these kind of uh, sources are there. Carbon monoxide is uh, toxic and uh, short term exposure 
and the elevated carbon monoxide levels can uh, be there in the indoor settings and it can be very dangerous also sometimes. Then numerous indoor air pollutants are there uh, of biological nature like dust mites etcetera, mold, pet, uh, dander okay. and then uh, these uh, smoke may be there, second hand smoke. Okay. So, all allergens etcetera are there which can trigger asthma, which can have many other negative impacts. So, we should be careful about those uh, things and we should have good ventilation so that uh, uh, the indoor environment is safer or clean air is maintained. Okay, so, this is the references, uh, you can go through them for additional information. So, this is all for today, see you in the next lecture, thank you, thank you very much.